in our final video of our temple series, we're going to make some two-scale water fountains and flower gardens complete with floating butterflies this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, we're going to create some two-scale water fountains making use of the Shifting Lands Brick Jig. This thing is absolutely amazing. It allows you to create the realistic brick look in seconds. And what do I mean by two scale? If you ever gone to the mall when you were a kid and your parents give you a penny or a nickel to toss in the water fountain, you notice that the water fountain typically comes up maybe to about your knee or so. Now I know there's all different kinds of fountains. We're in a fantasy world, so if there's dragons, they could be fountains the size of a house. But this is just something that's really nice that you can make fairly quickly. You can make a bunch of these and use them as scatter terrain. Now the water pots and the butterflies that I'm using in this video were created by Zane from Zane Morgan Crafts. Check his YouTube video out. And the cool thing about scatter terrain, which I was just recently reminded of by a bunch of guys over at Wormwood. I was playing a uh, one shot with them as well as Scott from Paladin Woodworking Maine over on Instagram. And we made use of my catacomb series, all the stuff in that. And the guys were telling me how much they enjoyed playing on it. And what they found most useful was all the scatter terrain from that series. So if you want to check out some photos of that encounter with the guys from Wormwood and Scott from Paladin Woodworking, head on over to my Instagram. You can see a bunch of photos there. Also, if you like candles, head on over to Firelight Fables Candles and at checkout type in TWC10 at checkout. It'll get you 10% off your entire order. A little kickback will come to me to help out the channel. All right, so if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. Okay, so what better candle from Firelight Fables than going with the castle grounds? I always try and match that with the craft that I'm working on. It smells like mossy walls and rose bushes, so absolutely perfect for the video. Now, everybody knows that I like working with stencils. Here, I'm just kind of winging it with my stencil. I drew this out and I traced it over onto some dollar store foam core just to kind of get that cut without having to make too many secondary cuts on the foam. Once I was done with the main stencil, all I did was reduce it by about maybe three quarters of an inch uh, all the way around for that second piece. Now again, working with the Shifting Lands smallest brick jig that they make to keep these bricks or blocks as small as I can for these fountains. You can see down below in the bottom left, it's a quick little tutorial on how to use it. I'll put a link up above to my tower video from Sintra, which was inspired by obviously The Witcher. And I show a lot more in depth on how that works. Uh, really fun video to watch. Check it out after this one. You can see how easily and quickly those blocks wrap right around anything that you're working on, leaving a nice gap for some grout or mortar if you want to put it on there. Now, working with hot glue, I love working quickly with this stuff. That way I don't have to stop and wait for things secure. If I was to use tacky glue and pin this, it would take quite a while. Hot glue, no problem. One, two, three, we stack this up. I got all this done probably in about, uh, geez, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes. If you're enjoying this video and my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. All right, now I love using this light patch and paint. It goes into the crevices of the blocks very easily. And when you're done wiping it on there, you can use a Q-tip or a wet paper towel to wipe the excess off. That's what you should be left with. The sand on the inside, I just sprayed that with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to break down the surface tension. And then uh, I hit that with a glue wash and that's just a little pillar jig from Shifting Lands. Now I've made this homemade mud texture in my catacomb series. I talked about that earlier in the video. Um, there'll be a link somewhere in this video to how to make this stuff. It's quick, it's easy, it looks really good, and um, yeah, save you a lot of money instead of buying these uh, expensive textures online. All right, now I didn't show it before, but all I did was add a little tacky glue to the other fountain as well before I added the sand, just to help it kind of stick a little bit better. Then we do the alcohol and then a glue wash to lock it all in place. Now once that glue starts to set, I'll take an old paintbrush and just kind of move it around just to get a little bit of texture to the sand or gravel rocks that you're gonna use for the bottom of the fountain. Now using my Anycubic Photon D2 and Zane from Zane Morgan Crafts 
YouTube channel. Check him out. Uh, I printed off these butterflies. These came out really awesome. I did a couple different sizes as well. This is actually my second go around because when I was done printing the butterflies, I actually knocked my build plate over and squashed every single one of them. That was a little frustrating. They are delicate, but once they cure, you know, they're, they're pretty much all set. Now as well, these little water jugs come with the file too, if you want to pick that up, show Zane a little support. And I'm just putting a little bit of super glue on the foam pillar, and you can see I just touched the uh, water jug to that Q-tip, which had some accelerant on it, which will help cure the super glue almost instantly. And I don't even bother with the, the tweezers there, just use your fingers to kind of press it in place. Now obviously this is the design that I went with. You can go with any design you want, putting you know, one, two, three, four, eight uh, of these water jugs on there, however you want to do it. Now I want to have this look as realistic as possible and every exterior water fountain, something that I haven't seen in the local mall, you know, and even the ones in the mall to be honest with you, have a lot of algae in them, so I just want to paint that up in a dark green color. Now the back to bring the top of the fountain together with the base and honestly the rest of this series I went with those brightly colored uh, paints that you saw there in the background for all the, the water jugs. And same technique, you're going to see it quite a bit in this video using the accelerant and super glue to hold these in place and help me move quickly through the craft. I didn't want to use hot glue because that does have the tendency of when you bump into it snapping off or it doesn't really hold that well. All right, now using this fishing line, any fishing line you have uh, will work. This is, I think, like an eight pound test. And again, accelerant in that water jug and I just placed the uh, super glue on the end of the fishing line to hold it right in place. This was a fun little design. I really was anxious to kind of get this one underway. A uh, really interesting thing too, when I poured the resin on that, I don't know what I was thinking. I had a couple bubbles and everybody knows you can use heat. <laughs> I used my lighter and I actually burnt instantly the fishing line. So I had to redo all that. Not, not good. Now, I don't know if this dye is great to be using with this water texture here from Woodland Scenics. Um, it cured fine. It cured fine when the craft was all done. So I'm assuming you can use it if you want to as well. I wanted the water to be uh, a little bit, you know, green, a little bit of blue in there. And then we're gonna break out the Vallejo water texture to just wipe this onto all the fishing line. I was really, really impressed, and I, I have been, I've used this product quite a bit, um, at how crystal clear and how cool that water looked uh, coming out of the, uh, the fountain once it, uh, once it cured. Now I'm using a pipette. I had a couple of spots that for some reason, it was like there was a, a magical hole in this fountain where this uh, water texture just kept disappearing. I had to apply a couple different layers. I just used the pipette to put in there and we can use the pipette also to suck out any bubbles that we might have created. Yeah, I don't know what happened on this, even with the other fountain as well. I had to go back and keep reapplying. It wasn't that it had settled or shrunk. It's that there were literally like sinkholes in some of the areas on these. All right, now I love the uh, greenery from Diorama Precipe, the foliage. It's top notch in my opinion. Uh, very good for obviously dioramas, tabletop gaming. If you're gonna use it and play with some people that aren't gonna be too rough with your terrain. And I'm just placing that all on top of our homemade texture. A little pop of yellow with some of these static grass tufts. And now we're on to painting the butterflies from Zane. And I put a black and white primer on these to kind of vary it up. Now wherever you're going to place some of these lighter colors, you obviously want to put a little bit of white paint first, or it's going to be really hard to see it and you have to do a ton of coats. Putting that white paint first allows us to move quickly through the craft. All right, now this was the fun part. I was really looking forward to how this final look was gonna be for the butterflies. And again, I'm using that eight pound test line. Here you wanna go with a very thin, small line. Eight pound was about the most. Once you get to 10 and up, it gets a little thick, it turns blue almost. So you're sticking with the eight pound test line. 
I put a little bit of glue, super glue on the line and the accelerant on the butterfly. And this was actually really fun to do this. I wish I had more butterflies, but um, I was very happy with the way this turned out. All right, now we're on the home stretch. We gotta just add a few splashes going back to the water texture. I put that on there. I had a little water texture on the water coming out of the uh, water pots. And I put some of the Woodland Scenics realistic water over it. It turned a little cloudy, so just be aware of that. Make sure it's completely cured before you add uh, any of the other water textures. And that's it, we're ready to go. We'll add a little uh, bird here at the end, a bird or two on top of the fountain. Everybody knows I like those details. And uh, we're good to go. All right, I hope you had a lot of fun watching this series, as much fun as I had making it. I'll also have a link down below to Shifting Lands and Shifting Lands USA, where you can pick up your brick jig, as well as the links to Zane's butterflies and little water jugs that he made. I don't know where else you can find STL files of butterflies, but that's where you're gonna find them. If you also wanna help out the channel, head on over to Firelight Fables Candles. Again, TWC10 at checkout will give you a discount there and help the channel out. You can also hit that super thanks button down below. It's something new on my channel to do like a one-time donation as well as picking up some merchandise. And the most important thing, head on over to Patreon. I've got four tiers there with some great kickbacks for you. You can hang out with me at night while I'm crafting, all kinds of good stuff. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.